Now I have this set up as part one, and that's because the next topic we do factoring, then we go back to fractions that you have to factor something in. Okay, so then we, we keep going back to it as we add something harder. So we're starting easy today, just numbers to start. So the first topic is going to be reducing and multiplying fractions. So a little crash course in fractions. When do you start fractions? What grade? Somewhere in elementary school. Yeah, yeah. it is. Like uh, grade four or five. Or yeah, it, four you do it a little tiny bit, and then five you do you do fractions more. So this is the topic. And then how many years do you do it after that? Say you started in grade five. Every single year. Now who's still not very good with fractions? Right, and so that's the one. Uh, the the people raising their hand are the ones that are willing to admit that in front of everyone else. So the other, there's probably the same amount that didn't want to admit it, right? So let's get it over with, okay? So that you are not going to raise your hand next time. So we're going to start with reducing fractions. So when you've got a fraction and you need to reduce it, we're going to start with just numbers, so fractions rather than rational expressions. Hopefully some of you will see what we need to do right now, but basically it is this. You can write the factors, so the word factor means what? Uh, multiply. multiply, and I said that in another class. So 75 is 25 times 3. So you can write the factors, or you can think about them in your head, and then when a fraction is multiplied, there's, notice there's no plus or minus sign in here, we do what's called canceling. But what you're actually doing, so we often will do that. So I canceled or I crossed off the whole top. So what's left? One. Why is that? Well, this is 25 times 1. This one is 25 times 3. So we're left with 1 third. Now, canceling is not, act it, we do say it a lot, but it's not actually the mathematical term for doing this. What we are actually doing is this. So this is 25 times 1, and this is 25 times 3. This can be written as two fractions that are multiplied. We don't often do that because we just cancel, it's quicker, and that's why that term sort of came in. But what we're actually doing is saying, well, 25 over 25 is equal to 1. Anytime the fraction has the same top and bottom, same numerator and denominator, it's equal to 1. So this is 1 times 1 third. And what is 1 times anything? Itself. Itself. So that's, that's the mathematical way to do it. Do we do that in practice? Not really, but when you add letters in, all of a sudden this stuff becomes more complicated and you got all messed up at some point in your schooling and it got confusing. And that's because you were more trying to cancel things and less understanding what you were actually doing, okay? Which is that 25 over 25 is equal to 1, 1 times anything is itself. All right, so let's do another example. 21 over 35. So what is the factor that I ha made these two have in common? Seven. seven. So you might notice that or you might not notice it. If you didn't notice it and it was asking you to reduce, you'd have to try to figure that out. But this is seven times three and this one is seven times five. So the seven over seven is equal to one and all we have at left is three over five. Now this same technique is used if we're multiplying fractions. So they already broke the factors up for you. 5 over 2 times 4 over 15. It's the exact same question. Do not multiply before you cancel. Okay, so I'm going to say what I mean by that. Here's two fractions that are multiplied. To multiply fractions, this is the rule. A over B times C over D is equal to A times C over B times 
D. That's the rule with letters in it. So what is this rule saying? It's saying if we have two fractions that are multiplied, you multiply the tops, write it on top of the fraction, you multiply the bottoms, write it on the bottom of the fraction. And whatever that is is your answer. Here's the issue with that and no calculator. 5 times 4 is 20, 2 times is 30. That one's easy to simplify after. But what if the numbers were bigger? You multiply, you're getting bigger numbers, and then what do you need to do to simplify it? Factor, factor it. What well, was already factored? So when you have one fraction, what you're doing is breaking it up into two fractions so that you can simplify one. So if you already have two fractions, it's already broken up. You can probably either break it up further or look at this. 5 times 4 over 2 times 15. What cancels right now? Nothing exactly. We can The 5 goes into 15 and the 2 goes into 4. How do we show that as factors? 4 is 2 times 2 and 15 is? 5 times 3. So now what cancels? The 5's and, and one of the 2's and so you're left with 2 thirds and there was no multiplying involved. So we multiplied two fractions and we didn't actually even have to multiply anything. When you're multiplying fractions you reduce first and then multiply. Okay, so number four. Same goes for three fractions. Okay, so we've got three fractions that we want to multiply. Do not multiply the numbers. Instead, Write them as one big long fraction with all the factors. We could break up, so this is 1 times 9 times 10. So can we break up anything further? Uh, 1 times 3 times 3. Yeah, 9 is 3 times 3. 10 is? 5 times 2. 5 times 2, or 2 times 5. Whoops. That's a 3. Now look how weird this looks, but it's still the same thing. And when you have no calculator, this is a much better technique. You break everything down to its factors. If stuff cancels, you cancel it, and then you have your answer. Um, for our homework, do we have to show all this stuff? Um, for the homework on this, I'm going to say yes, but you're actually using this later to not do it. So I would say yes for this homework. You want to do it just to... Yeah, and it also teaches you to write equal signs in the right place and stuff, and I can comment on that because when you get into uh, later in math, if your equal signs aren't in the right place or if you don't write the steps right, even though the question is not as easy as this, you'll lose marks for presentation. So it's good to practice. All right, so what cancels? Another three and a two. So what do we have left? We've got 1 times 5 on the top. Now remember, this is still times 1. There's always a times 1. So if the whole bottom or the whole top is gone, there's still a 1 there. So this is, what's left is 1 times 5 over 1, which is just 5. Now, there could have been another way to do this, and this might be what you're thinking. I noticed that the 3 and the 9s, you see it, they cancel. 
The other thing you could do if you want to show all your work still without breaking down the 9 is you can say 3 times 3 is 9 and have a 9 on top and bottom. Okay. But we're just practicing breaking things down because when we get letters, you have to break it down. You can't just see that they cancel. All right, so then the next one is an example of what we call a scalar, which is just a real number, times a fraction. So we've got a scalar, which is 3 times a fraction. And let me just make a note before we do this question is that we don't use mixed numbers. We don't use mixed numbers as a general rule, okay? There's one reason for that is that if I've got 3 times 2 fifths and 3 and 2 fifths, these are different amounts. But in calculus, you'll have this situation a lot. And if you're thinking of it as a mixed number, then you end up screwing something up. So if you have, a, have in, I know in school, any improper fraction, any fraction that the top is bigger than the bottom, they get you to write it as a mixed fraction just leave it as one single fraction because all your operations are going to be easier. You can't do the same things. This is 3 and 2 fifths, which is 3 plus 2 fifths is what it works out to be. And this is 3 times 2 fifths or 2 fifths of 3, which is smaller than 3 and this is bigger than 3. So they're two different <coughs> things. This is um, 2 fifths of 3. Kind of doesn't sound right the other way. 3 of 2 fifths. but Okay, so there are two different numbers. So going back to the question, number 5. <coughs> so 3 times 2 fifths is the same as 3 over 1 times 2 over 5. And then it's the same thing, a multiplication of fractions. Nothing actually cancels here. Do you see that? 5 can't be broken down further. So we have 3 times 2 on the top and 1 times 5, so this is 6 over 5. Well, that's what I'm saying. Don't do that, <laughs> actually. I just said yes, but don't write it as a mixed fraction. So do not write that this is one and one-fifth because in calculus that will become so confusing. Yeah, so just always leave it. I mean, if you need to plot it on a graph or something, knowing what the mixed number is, that it's one and one-fifth, makes it easier to plot. But just do that to yourself, not as a writing of an answer. Anything in calculus you're going to leave as one fraction. If you try to write it as mixed fractions, then you end up multiplying it instead of it adding, and the question's then wrong. Okay. Okay, just another one like that. So 22 times 2 over 11. This is 22 over 1 times 2 over 11. 22 can be written as 2 times 11, so the 11s cancel. And we have left 2 times 2 over 1, which is 4 over 1, or just 4.
Okay, so that topic was multiplying fractions or reducing fractions, which is the same thing. When you're reducing a fraction, you're just multiplying or looking at the factors. Now, dividing fractions can be written two ways. With a divide sign, which you actually won't ever see in a calculus book, but we'll do it here in class. And then how else do they show a divide? Slash. Right, a slash or a fraction line. A fraction is a divide. If we have... Uh, 21 divided by 7, this is the same as a fraction, 21 over 7. This is 21 divided by 7. We don't see that divide symbol a lot. We often see a fraction line. So we're going to do a little of both. So I'll show you the differences. Okay. So what is this answer? Three. Just 3. Now we could have said, oh, well, this is 7 times 3 over 7. Sevens cancel, and we just have three. Or you know your times tables, and you say it's three. Right? Okay, so examples. One fourth divided by two fifths. So what's the method to, to divide fractions? So let's put the note over here. So A over B divided by C over D. We rewrite the first one. We multiply by, what's it called when we flip over a fraction? Reciprocal. Okay, so we flip it over. And then we multiply, and then it's just the same as what we were doing. <coughs> so you need to get rid of your divide sign, and then you just do the same thing. You write the factors and cancel anything that cancels and write your answer. So here we have 1 fourth times 5 over 2. Anything going to cancel? No. On top we have 1 times 5. On the bottom, 4 times 2. 5 can't be broken down further. There's no 5 on the bottom, so this will just be 5 over 8. So rewrite the first one, 2 thirds times the second one flipped over. Is anything getting canceled here? Yep. The 6 can be broken down further, and it does have a 3 in it. So this is 2 times 6 over 3 times 1. 2 times 3 times 2. 6 is 3 times 2. The 3s cancel, and we have 2 times 2 is 4 on the top and a 1 on the bottom, which is just 4. Can you think about what the 1 fourth means in this question? Like, what does it actually, like, uh, say pizzas, because we always do fraction pizzas, right? Or a pie or something. What does the question mean, and how does that answer four fit into this? Uh, not quite, but very close. It's the other way around. We're taking two-thirds and dividing, dividing it into six. How much is like a third, say you had a third of a pizza, and then you wanted six of pizza. So you had three pieces, a pizza cut into three, but you wanted it to be a pizza cut into six. What would you do? Cut each third into half. Cut each third in half, and now you have six pieces. Does that make sense? So here's a pizza, and I said, if you had thirds, but you actually wanted, you had six people, not three, so how would you make it even? You would cut each of these in half, and now you've got six pieces. This is saying, if you had two-thirds of a pizza, so this piece is already gone, so this is all you have left, and you wanted to break it into six, how many pieces do you have? So you're taking the pizza, cutting it into six pieces, which is each of these in half, and you've got four of them. So there's four six in two-thirds. So that's what it's saying. Now, maybe you forgot that from a way long time ago, but 
that's how it works. Some of them are harder to think about what they are, but when you've got two fractions divided, you can often think of it as pizza, especially if the number is bigger. This is a bit harder because the answer doesn't work out nice. This one worked out nice, so you can illustrate it. Okay, number three. So again, we don't have to have a fraction divided by a fraction. We can have a number or a scalar divided by a fraction. So this is still five times, and you flip the other one over. So this is like a five over one, and so this is just five times 10 over one, which is 50. Five pizzas cut into tenths, you've got 50 pieces. Three quarters divided by two. So you don't flip over the three quarters. That's what you keep the same. That's what you're taking and dividing it into two. So this two is like a two over one. So this is three quarters times one over two. Two more like this, 5, 10 over 21 divided by 7 over 30. Okay, same thing, but this is more of what you would see because we don't ever see that divide symbol. So this is be more what it would look like, a fraction over a fraction. So this is 10 over 21 divided by 7 over 30. So 10 over 21 times 30 over 7. Now, does anything cancel? Okay. And the 30, 3 times 10? So there is a 3 that cancels. 10 times 10? 100. 7 times 7? 49, and leave it like that. Don't write a mixed number. Okay, so here's three. So if you like that divide symbol first before you flip over the second one, you do that. But it's top divided by bottom, always. Top divided by bottom. Then flip it over. So this would be two times four over three. is 8 over 3. So write this one out. Write that first step with the divide symbol. Top divided by bottom. 1 fifth divided by 2. So we don't flip the 1 fifth over. Multiply by the 2 flipped over is one half. You put a one on the bottom, so one over two. So we have one over ten. And the last one before we add variables in, three over twenty uh, divided by six over eight. 
That's what the question is. Flip over the second one and multiply. Now this one does simplify. So let's see. 3 times 8 is 4 times 2. 20 is 4 times 5. 6 is 3 times 2. Um, the fourth could be broken down further, but I do have a four on top and bottom, so I wouldn't even need to do that. I could just cancel. So the fours cancel, a three cancels, a two cancels, and so we're left with nothing on top, which is a one, and on the bottom a five. Questions? Yeah. Um, would <laughs> I kind of didn't break it down? Uh, Twenty-four over one twenty. Let me do the one fifth. Uh, Twenty-four one twentieth. Twenty-four over one twenty. Yeah, so l let me show you. So, so I did the quick question. Yeah, it's okay. So the the numbers here, say you didn't know the factors of them. How could you start breaking it down? You could say, well, this number's even. So what, 2 times what equals, or what's half of 24? 12. 12. So you could say this is 12 times 2. And here, is this even as well? Yeah, or we could say 12 times 10, that would be one way to break it down. But you could do halves. I'll often do that, like go by half, by half, by half, because this would be 60 times 2. Now the 2s are gone. So we have 12 over 60. Now are they both even still? Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so we can cut them in half again. So we would have 6 times 2, and half of that is 30 times 2. That. And can we do by half again? Yeah. yeah. Now, however many times I can do by half, with this, this next one will be the last one, actually. How many times did I do 2 by 2 by 2? Two? 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. It meant that you might have noticed that 8 went into both of them when it started. But you might not have. Because who knows that 8 goes into 120? Probably not a lot of people right off the top of their head, right? Mm -hmm. So going by 2s, or if they both divide by 3, then that's a good way to start. So this is 3 times 2, and this is, I would probably go by 3 at this point, but if we're sticking with what I'm doing, 15 times 2, 2's cancel. So we have 3 over 15. Now this is 5 times 3, so 1 fifth. So what was the factors? Like, what did I cancel? I canceled a what? A 2. Mm -hmm. What else? Another 2. Mm -hmm. A third 2. Mm -hmm. And a 3. three. 8 times 3 is 24. So this meant that 24 <laughs> over 120, 24 also went into the bottom one five times. The 24s canceled and you had one fifth. But we probably wouldn't have known that 24 is a factor of 120, so you probably couldn't have jumped right to that without a calculator, right, without a lot of work. Yeah, and any, any combination of that, yeah. Yeah, this is 4 times 6, so that would have been a 4 and a 6 would have cancelled. This could be 8 times 3, so an 8 and a 3 would have cancelled. Any combination of that. 2 times uh, 12. Yeah. Okay, so I'll write with variables down again. Okay, so now here's where people go wrong with fractions and variables. A couple things. If I have 2x, this is the same as 2 times x. I could write this as x times 2 if I wanted to. 
it's not standard to put the X before the number. It's usually standard to put the three. But they're not attached. They're not attached. They're not one thing. It's two times X. X squared is what factors? What multiplies to give X squared? X times X. These are two different things. One is a number times X, and the other is X times X. They're different from each other. Okay? So if I have, for example, 2X over 2, the 2's cancel, but the X doesn't, because this is 2 times X over 2, or 2 times 1 even if you wanted to, the twos cancel and we're left with just x. Okay? Now what about x squared over x? This is x times x over x, which is x. Okay, those both have the same answer, but they're two different questions. Okay, so watch what the factors are. When you've got a number in front of the variable, that's a factor. 3 times x is two factors, a 3 and an x multiplied. Okay, so we've got a fraction multiplied here. 4x over y squared and times 2y over 8x squared. So using the same thing we were doing before, this is the same as 4 times x times 2 times y. So I just break it down. You're not going to break it all down this far after a while, but... I'm just showing you how to break it down, do it following the same thing we were doing. If you write all the factors, this is not a 4x, this is a 4 times x. So what here cancels? Um, right now I can see that I could cancel an x and a y. And a y. And uh, actually... What do you see? Yeah, the A could be breaking down to 4 and 2, so they'll both cancel. Or you could multiply the top and get 8, and there would be an 8 on top and bottom. Either way, let's break it down, because that's what we've been doing. So both the 4 and the 2 cancel. Everything's gone off the top, so 1. And on the bottom, we have Y times X. Now, the standard way to write it is in alphabetical order. So you would write x times y instead of y times x, or just xy. Not that it's wrong. It's not wrong to say y times x. It's just not the standard way a mathematician would write it. It's always alphabetical order with whatever's left, and the numbers would be in front. Okay, so 2x squared over 9 times 21 over x cubed. Two times x times x. x squared is x times x. 21, we need to break it down because there there is something we might be able to cancel down there. 3 times 7. Here, this would be 3 times 3 times x times x times x. Kind of silly doing this, because if I give you an x to the 20, I don't want you writing out 20 x's. Okay? We're going to simplify these better later, but we just want to start the same. We don't want to introduce too many rules at once. So, what do we do? Two of the x's cancel, so we'd be left with one on the bottom. 
notice there was an x squared, two x's and three x's here. So two of them will cancel and we'd be left with one on the bottom. Does that make sense? And the numbers, well, so two of these, uh, one, three, and I think that's it. So what do we have left on top? Two times seven, which is 14, and three times x. So 14 over 3x. Now, back up to what I said a long time ago, and I said reducing is the same as multiplying. If they have a fraction that's multiplied, it's actually easier to reduce because the numbers are already factored. If you had multiplied this, what would we get? 20, it, it would be 2 times 21 is 42x squared over 9x cubed. And then how would we reduce it? We'd then have to break the 42 down. But we just went from it already being partially factored and now it's not. So you're going backwards if you multiply your fractions first and then reduce. It's like going backwards. So you don't want to do that. You don't want to multiply the tops and bottoms and make the numbers bigger and then have to factor them and make them smaller again when they already started smaller. Okay. So it can be a scalar, or 2x squared doesn't have a bottom, but you can put a 1 on the bottom if you want to. So this is 2 times x times x times 3 over just 1x. You can think of that as a over 1. So one of the x's cancel and nothing else. So what we have on top is 2 times x times 3 over 1. Now, the standard way to rewrite this would be to multiply, because remember, you can multiply like 5 times 2 and 2 times 5. It's the same either way. So this 2 times x times 3, or 3 times 2 times x, or x times 3 times 2, or any combination, they're just multiplied. So what would that equal? 6x six over, over 1, or just 6x. divided by. So this is 4x cubed, that's over 1. You don't change the first fraction, you multiply by the reciprocal of the second, or flip over the second fraction. So 4x cubed times x over 1 times 12. No x's cancel. Can the 4 cancel with something on the bottom? Yeah. Twelve is four times three, so the fours cancel. How many x's do we have on top now? Four. This is x times x times x times x. Four of them. So x to the fourth power, not four times x. That's different. Over three. That would be your answer. Okay, so try this one. Oh, sorry. Here we go. 